The second someone says, you are invalidating my lived experience, it's over with. The whole discourse gets shut down, debated, canceled. <laughs> The asexual discourse's problems are more like a microcosm of what liberal discourse is like, but I'm not really talking about liberal discourse. I might say a little, you know, things here and there, but this is really about asexual discourse. So, you know, those of you who don't know, most of you should know, but those of you who don't know, um, the definition of asexuality is someone who has little to no sexual attraction. Now, that has nothing to do with whether or not you enjoy sex. That has nothing to do with your sex drive or how horny you get. That has nothing to do with whether or not you choose to have sex. Like, you could be somebody who don't like it and you just choose to do it and that's up to you. You know, as long as you consenting, it's whatever. But the basic definition is you experience little to no sexual attraction. It used to be no sexual attraction, and then it got expanded to include people who experience very little sexual attraction. I don't care. It, it doesn't bother me that much for them to include people who experience it a little bit. But I'm going to talk to you about how that has become a little bit problematic in this video today. So one of the things about liberal discourse and asexual discourse, they kind of run hand in hand. Most asexual people... <laughs> tend to also be, you know, liberal progressive people because a big thing about the ace community is that you are often excluded from other communities. So you, you know, you're excluded from straight people because they don't believe you're telling the truth. They think you're lying. Um, and then you're excluded from the LGBT community because they're like, oh, you're not oppressed enough or you're just straight and you're just pretending. So, you know, the straight people think you faking, the gay people think you're faking. It's just, a, it's a whole thing. And so, asexual communities tend to try to do their best to be like as accepting as possible because we don't want to treat other people the way we've been treated you know um and we don't want to gatekeep we don't want to kick people out or say you can't have this experience and be ace or whatever we don't do that and i like it for that because i do feel like a lot of sexuality is a spectrum and even within certain labels is still a spectrum so it does not bother me for the community to be like, you know, as, as as accepting as possible. That does not bother me at all. But how do I say this without sounding mean? You can be too accepting. And I'm going to get into some examples of that. So I'm just going to go off some simple examples and then I'll get to the, the bigger example that made me really upset. So... One of the things you have to deal with when you come out as an asexual person is all the people claiming, you know, that it's not real, right? You know, that you have people who say, um, you don't know, you just haven't had sex yet, or you're just afraid of sex, or you just have a low libido, you know, you get your hormones checked, you'll be fine, you'll be straight again, da 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 da. You know, so people say stuff like that, though, they say, Oh, you must have been sexually abused as a child, and that's why you're you're saying you're asexual. But you know, you just need therapy, and then you'll be fine and stuff like that. So, a lot of uh, the only outside, a lot of what asexual people end up having to do is defend their claim to asexuality and say, like, no, this is about my lack of sexual attraction. It has nothing to do with my hormones. It has nothing to do with my trauma history. It has nothing to do with my mental health. It has nothing to do with whether or not I even enjoy the act of sex. It is purely about the fact that I am not sexually attracted to other people. You know, asexual people can be in the kink community. You know, they could, you know, be um, sex workers. They can do whatever they want to do. It doesn't make them any less ace because at the end of the day, asexuality is about your lack of sexual attraction or if you have very, very little sexual attraction. I don't know where the line is there. I don't care. So one of the things that frustrated me was then in these ace groups, people often come in not knowing if they're ace or not. And they ask, you know, hey, this is my experience. Am I ace? Am I not? And what I usually say to people is what was said to me when I first was trying to figure out if I was ace. And, I, and it was like, there's no one way to be asexual. You know, there's a spectrum of experiences and, you know, you just gotta, if the label feels right, if the group 
the community feels right, you feel like you identify with a lot of the different things that people are saying, then, you know, you say your ace is fine. And if at some point later on, you're like, I thought I was ace, but really I'm this, that's fine too. I had a friend who thought he was asexual and, um, you know, now he doesn't identify as asexual anymore. And that's totally fine. I'm not mad at him about it. He didn't take nothing from me <laughs> by, by saying that he was asexual, you know, like it's just fine. You know, if it fits you, if it feels right in the moment, use it basically. Um, so one of these questions that came up was that someone said, basically, um, I identified as asexual, but then I did like birth control or testosterone, whatever. And my hormones got all out of whack. And now I want to have sex with people. I'm seeking, I'm, I'm sexually attracted to people. I'm seeking out sexual experiences and, you know, am I still ace? And people were very, they were very com uh, accommodating and nice. They were like, Hey, look, if it still fits for you, it still fits for you. It's whatever, you know, that's how you feel. Um, some people were like, if you're concerned about like hypersexuality, like, you know, some people have like mania or manic episodes and they're like, if you're concerned about hypersexuality, you know, talk to your doctor, make sure everything's going right. Make sure this is what you actually want to do. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So no, nobody was really going to say, no, you're not ace anymore because blah, 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 blah. We, we didn't really care. We let it slide, you know, cause again, we don't want to gatekeep anything. We don't want to be like telling people what they can and cannot identify as that's fucked up. So we let it slide. It was like, Hey, you're always welcome in the community. You don't have to leave the group. You know, it's, 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 it's up to you. Um, and it just, it seems so small and insignificant. Like, I didn't even feel like the need to be like, well, if your hormones are high and now you want to have sex with people and you're sexually attracted to people, then that just means that beforehand your hormones were low and da 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 And so then you never really were asexual. Like, I didn't feel the need to do that. Nobody felt the need to do that. We were all like, if it feels good for you, to say you're asexual if you don't want to say you're asexual anymore that's totally fine too we're not mad you're you're good you know it was a very small thing right nobody cared this is person's experience we were all very nice about it no no problem so then someone posted and it's and it's a dude this time and he says that he has some kind of accident or surgery problem where he now has erectile dysfunction and so now he's like, I have no desire to have sex because I have no libido. Um, does this mean I'm asexual? And people were still nice. We were still nice about it. We were kind of like, um, but we did kind of let him know that asexuality is about sexual attraction. Um, if because of, you know, this, this condition that you have, you have a low libido low libido does not necessarily mean asexual you know you could be an asexual person with a high libido so it's not necessarily about your libido or how aroused you get you know because it's it's about sexual attraction are you sexually attracted to people not do you feel horny right now <laughs> you know but we were all very really nice about it we're like hey um again um, if you are feeling distressed about, you know, your lack of libido, that's something for you to work on with your doctor, but libido doesn't equal asexual, you know, it's, it's fine. But we would, nobody like say you're awful. How dare you? Blah, 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 blah. It was fine. So then someone comes in and then says, I'm asexual because I have erectile dysfunction so all of y'all need to shut up and i am the one who is telling this person that they are asexual because this is my lived experience and none of y'all can invalidate me and this is the thing that made me mad because i get this a lot in other liberal progressive groups too the second someone says you are invalidating my lived experience it's over with whole discourse gets shut down, debated, canceled, you know, everybody says, okay, you win. Um, everybody acquiesces to that person and plastics that person you win, you're right. Cause nobody wants to invalidate someone's experiences. And I get that, but for the sake of the discourse, you cannot say 
erectile dysfunction causes asexuality. You can't say that. That's not appropriate to say. Now you can say, I identify as ace because I have erectile dysfunction. And that's your right. You have the right to identify as whatever you want to identify as, you know, and it's fine. But you cannot say for the whole community when we are fighting so hard just to be accepted that I that my erectile dysfunction caused me to be asexual. Because then that implies that if we fix your erectile dysfunction, then you won't be asexual anymore. Which is one of the arguments that we always fight against when we're talking to people outside of the group who are like, oh, you just need to get your hormones checked. Oh, you, you know, something happened and that's why you're asexual. But asexuality isn't real. It's just a result of, you know, a low libido or the result of hormonal issues. And you just got to fix it. You know, you got to fix the asexuality. It's not natural. It's not normal. Like that's, that's where that goes. And so it's like, the second that person said, like, don't listen to anybody else in this group, I'm asexual because I have erectile dysfunction and it's real and it's valid and you're not going to validate my lived experience and blah, blah, blah. Everybody shut up. Everybody was like, oh, well, that's your lived experience. We can't we can't come for you. And it's like, it's not about you. You know what I mean? Like so many people online take things as a personal attack against them. And it's not. There are some things that when you talk about the broader discourse, you cannot just come in and say this one person had this one experience and therefore we need to change the definition of the whole thing to fit this one person. Now, again, if this person wants to identify as asexual because of their erectile dysfunction, we don't care. You just, you say you asexual. You don't, you don't have to go around saying I'm asexual specifically because I have erectile dysfunction. You could just say I'm asexual and we'd be like, what up fam? Cool. You know, nobody ever questions it when you say it in these groups, you know, if you say you're asexual and people in the group are like, Hey, you're asexual. Cool. Fam. Good. That's it. We don't say, well, are you really asexual though? Like answer this 10 question quiz on Buzzfeed to tell us if you're really asexual. No, we don't give a fuck. Like you just, if it's what you are, it's what you are, man. Like we don't care, but you cannot change the discourse and change the definition of asexuality because you chose to identify as asexual because of your erectile dysfunction. You don't do that because you're fucking it up for the rest of us because we fight so hard to say it is a sexual orientation and we cannot change it. You know, that's the purpose of a sexual orientation because of, sexual orientations cannot be changed. You cannot be converted. You cannot be coerced, you know, into having experiences that would make you not ace. You cannot go to a doctor and get put on medication that is supposed to like change your libido or hormones that'll make you sexually attracted to people all, all of a sudden. You can't do that. That's the whole purpose of saying, you know, we're asexual. We're not broken. We don't need to be fixed. There's nothing wrong with us. We just happen to be. And you fucking that up by saying that if you get erectile dysfunction, you're ace now. And also, how do you, and, and now you're also speaking for people who have erectile dysfunction. Are people who have erectile dysfunction no longer straight or gay? Like, are they just asexual now? You, you gonna go around telling people that in the doctor's office? No, you're not. So why would you come into this group and say, this is a definitive thing just because this is how I choose to identify as a result of this thing. Now, if you wanna say you're ace, I don't care. You cannot change the discourse, though. You cannot change the definition of asexuality because of your own personal experience. You know, like, it's a spectrum. Fine. You can use the label if you want. Fine. You cannot tell people outside of the asexual community that this makes people asexual. Because now it's something that means that you're broken and you can be fixed. Or it's a condition now instead of an orientation. I don't like that. That made me upset. And then you get a lot of questions, too, about people saying, um, what if I'm only asexual because of trauma? Now, this is a, a different issue. It's a more complex issue than I had a, a circumcision as an adult and now I'm, my libido is low. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a different thing because trauma does really change people's brains. And it could lead to someone being sex repulsed 
or asexual. Now, what I've learned in my experience of like knowing people who have trauma, who are still sex, uh, heterosexual, people who have trauma, who are still homosexual, people who have trauma, who are still bisexual. There's nothing that says that having trauma or having sexual abuse or being assaulted or anything like that will make you asexual. There's nothing that says that. Now you can be sexual repulsed because you no longer want to engage in that, in that type of act and seeing images of it makes you sick. And you know, that is something that happens, but you can have uh, traumas and still identify as an allosexual. Not everybody who has a sexual trauma comes out and says that they're asexual. And if you have, if you felt like you were, you know, heterosexual or homosexual, and then you had a sexual trauma, and now you want to identify as asexual because you just, because you're sex repulsed, that's fine. Again, don't care <laughs> that you want to identify as asexual. You're not hurting me by identifying as asexual. Um, but all I ask of these people, because I have traumas as well you know, and I identify as asexual, but I will never say my trauma made me asexual because you see where the problem is there is that now you're saying that again, asexuality is something that is bad and is something that is caused by trauma. And if you just go through trauma therapy, then you won't be asexual anymore and you can be normal like the rest of everybody. No, no, I don't fuck with that. And, and I've had talks with my trauma therapist about like, you know, what if I go through this trauma therapy and I'm suddenly sexually attracted to people? Like, what if what if that happens? You know, and she was basically like, it could happen. But after knowing you for so long, I don't think it's super. It doesn't appear that that is the case, basically, because it's not like I'm not as sex repulsed as other people are, like to the point where like seeing sexual images makes me sick. Like I could I could look at sexual images, you know, I'm in a couple ace kink groups, you know, I can hear about it. I could talk with other people about it. Um, I just never had the um I never had the feelings of I want to do this with this person. Like I've never been attracted to a person um where I wanted to do anything beyond maybe hug them. Or hang out with them. You know, I know that sounds really childish. But, it, I mean, it just is what it is. Um, and so, my trauma therapist was like, it's very likely that even if you um, go through this trauma therapy, you you may still be asexual. And that's fine. And I was like, yeah, I'm cool with that. No, I'm good. I'm good with being having that identity. But if it happens that I am not anymore and I find myself sexually attracted to people, then I will, you know, change my label to fit that. And that's okay. You know, it's not an issue about, you know, you, you have to be born this way. Like sexuality does change and we can acknowledge that as a progressive community. Um, so it's not that big of a problem if you happen to be asexual now and it may or may not be related to your trauma history. And then if later on you heal from the trauma and you say, oh, I thought I was asexual, but actually, um, you know, bisexual or something. That's totally fine. It's totally fine. But don't say to people, especially people outside the community, that I am asexual because of trauma. And what happens in some of these comments, it's not every single comment. Um, not every single post that I see these comments, but every now and then I see a little comment here and be like, I'm asexual because of trauma. No. <laughs> and again, not invalidating your lived experience. If you are asexual, if you identify as asexual because of a trauma that caused you to be sex repulsed, it's completely up to you to identify that way. But you cannot go into the discourse and say, Trauma causes asexuality. There is no evidence that it does. Some people are ace and they happen to have trauma. And then some people are ace and they have no trauma. You know what I mean? Some people are ace and they are sex favorable. They enjoy sex. They have sex with their partners. They're in the kink community. And again, I think that what is happening in these, in these situations is that people are equating asexuality with sex repulsed. And that's not true. You can be sex repulsed and be heterosexual or homosexual. And sometimes we end up having to like argue 
in in these groups because people will try to make it seem like that is what asexuality means and that's not what it is it's about attraction it's not about your specific feelings towards sex it's not about your ethics around sex or your morals around sex it's not about your libido it's about are you sexually attracted to this person because you can be sexually attracted to somebody and still be like but i'm scared to actually have sex with you but i am sexually attracted to you that's the thing that happens to people like i said it's a spectrum but You cannot make the statement that this causes asexuality or that causes asexuality because when you do that, you invalidate the experiences of everybody, of every, the the whole community, you invalidate it by saying, basically saying that asexuality isn't an orientation, it's a condition or it's a result of some kind of condition that can be fixed and then you won't be ace anymore. And that is a huge problem. And I feel like not enough people are like, challenging these people because the second that they say this is my lived experience everyone bows down like oh i'm so sorry i'm not going to invalidate you you're completely right your experiences are valid and their experiences are valid but that don't mean we can't have a discourse that don't mean we can't have a debate about how we want the asexual community to be represented you know there was one situation that people got upset about was this uh, woman comes in the group and she is a sex repulsed asexual, but she doesn't want to call herself a sex repulsed asexual. So she says that I want to call myself a true asexual or like a literal asexual. Um, and she's like, I like, I, I want to call myself that. I think that that's better representing representing me. And then people came for her very nicely, mind you. Again, the asexual community is usually very, very nice. And people came for her nicely and said, but when you say that about yourself, it is implying that everyone who isn't sexual post isn't a real asexual, isn't a true asexual. And... They were trying to explain to her, like, there are different things you could say. You know, you could say you're sex repulsed. You could say you're, like, well, I think I heard a apotheosexual or something like that. Um, and they were just coming up with these different labels to just say you're just a type of asexuality. You are not the, the true asexual here. You know, you're not the real asexual. Please stand up. Like, no. You just happen to be asexual, and this happens to be your attitude towards sex. That's really what the sex repulsed and sex favorable and all of that is. So... They came for her really nice and she was like, again, well, this is just what feels right for me. This is just what feels right for me and my experience and da, 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 da. And people were like, that's cool. Just know that if you go around telling people that you are like a literal asexual or a true asexual because of the fact that you're a sexual post, you're doing a disservice to the entire community. And I think that that's where the responsibility comes in when you have a marginalized community you can have your own experiences but you have a responsibility to not make broad statements to everybody about what this um what this orientation really is because at the end of the day the orientation is that you are you have little to no sexual attraction you could be gray sexual means sometimes you have it sometimes you don't you can be demisexual demisexual means you have to have like a strong connection with somebody before you can feel sexually attracted to them And that's fine. We don't fight with that one either. I know some people are like, but that's just normal. We don't fight with that label either. Because you can label yourself however the fuck you want. And you can be a part of the asexual community if you want to. But you can't come out and say that the XYZ causes asexuality. Or I'm asexual because I'm sex repulsed. That's not what asexuality is. Your attitudes towards sex is different from whether or not you experience sexual attraction. So... Those things got me really upset. And then we've had, I'm in some asexual like singles groups and dating groups. And what has happened several times is that, and it's been specifically men that I noticed that this happens with, who will come into these groups and they would ask you what your sexuality is when you do like an introduction post or whatever. So you're like, oh, here's my name. Here's my pronouns. Here's my sexuality. Here's my romantic orientation, blah, blah, blah. And they will say their sexuality is straight or heterosexual and sometimes even like this one guy in particular said he specifically was here to meet uh, assigned female at birth people like specifically he wanted to only talk to women and when he said women he meant cis women he and cis women and non-binary afab people so that threw up a lot of red flags you know because whenever you go into these asexual like dating sites 
you have a lot of people on there that are looking for sugar babies or a lot of people on there that are just they're using the dating site for what people usually use it for which is to find people to have sex with and they don't care if it says it's asexualdating.com <laughs> you know they're just like i'm here to fuck what's up um so I was like a little concerned about that guy in particular who's like only want to talk to cis women and AFAB women. And because I was like, you're saying you straight, you're saying you only want to meet women here and you're, you're like heterosexual straight. Are you sure that that's what you mean or do you mean homo romantic? Because see, I mean hetero romantic. Because see, I'm being nice about it. I'm not just saying, ugh, get out, ugh, boys. I'm just like, do you mean hetero romantic? that you are asexual heteromantic. The guy basically was like, I mean, if that's what you want to say, ha ha ha. And I was like, okay, but what is it though? Because if you're a heterosexual and you're in an asexual group trying to meet asexual people, I'm a little concerned here. Like what's going on? Cause this is a space we created for asexual people to date each other. So you need to come, you need to say what you, say what you mean and clarify this and we even brought in the admin and the admin was like yeah cl please clarify this and he never clarified it and nothing happened he didn't get kicked out of the group or anything he just whatever and then he started commenting under women's posts and you know whatever or film presenting non-binary people and i was just like i'm not comfortable with that then we have another guy who comes in says hey i'm heterosexual here to meet women and people start doing what I did and they're like hey do you mean heteromantic like because if you're heterosexual this group is for asexual people you know and then some people they even say like oh you might be in the wrong group ha 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 you know and he was like I'm not in the wrong group but he didn't ever clarify if he meant heteromantic instead of heterosexual um and so then a bunch of people started coming to his event. Y'all being so mean. Y'all being bullies. Trying to gatekeep. And da 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 da. Or maybe he's. Some person even said. Or maybe he's just a heterosexual person. That likes to date asexual people. And I was like. That ain't got shit to do with what we talking about here. <laughs> if it's a group that is specifically for asexual people. To find each other. And get into relationships. Because it's hard dating. Other non uh, asexual people It's hard dating an allosexual when you're asexual Especially if th You're dating somebody who feels like Sex is what intimacy is And you happen to be somebody who Doesn't care about sex at all And you are not sexually attracted to your Partner it causes problems So we want to date other asexual people Who understand our experiences And so if you have Straight guys or even Straight women or non-binary People coming in and saying that I'm heterosexual or I'm homosexual, but I'm in your space for dating asexual people. That's not okay. We don't feel comfortable with that because we create spaces for ourselves. It's just like if we were in a black, black people meet dating only website. And then a white guy came in and he's like, yeah, I'm a white guy. I'm not a light skinned black guy. I'm straight up a white guy, but I'm here to meet black women. That shit wouldn't fly. So why does it fly here? Because you don't want to offend somebody's feelings. Like just confirm. And it's understandable too if you're new to the asexual community and you don't know the right terminology to use. That's fine. But that's what we create. You know, we create this whole little form that people fill out for their introductions that separates like sexuality and romantic orientation. You know, so that you can be like, okay. Okay, I'm asexual, but damn, what's romantic orientation? Now, that's some new stuff. I ain't heard of that yet. And then you can put in there like, mm, I don't really know. And that's fine. Um, but these these people saying straight up, or sometimes even they'll say, I'm a straight asexual. Or I'm a straight ace. Or I'm a heterosexual asexual. <laughs> and I'm like, well, now you're just being confusing. <laughs> you know, because a lot of things is like asexual people don't identify as straight. You know, or if you're a heteromantic asexual person, you might feel better saying you're straight, but understand that for the broader discourse, you cannot say that I'm a straight asexual person, just like you can't say you're a straight bisexual person or I'm a straight homosexual person. It don't make no sense when you use that type of terminology and it can become confusing and it can be distressing for people who think that they're in a space for a certain people and then have people come in and say, I'm not a part of your community, but I'm in here anyway. And I want to date you and send you messages and stuff and comment on your pictures and stuff. It makes things more creepy than it has to be. It just don't feel right. Um, I'm not sure if anything I'm saying is making sense, honestly. But for me personally, it's just one of those things where it's like, 
you can have an experience and you can choose a label that you feel best fits you, but you cannot co-opt the entire community and say that this is what this is. Cause it's not, I just personally don't feel that it is. But it just frustrates me that as soon as someone says you're invalidating my lived experience, everybody shuts up and it's like, oh, you guys don't bully them. Don't bully them. Nobody's trying to bully you. If we were bullying you, the admin would step in and tell us to shut the hell up. But it's not bullying because we're being very, very nice. And we're just like, hey, here's some useful terminology for you. Um, another thing that somebody said made me feel some type of way. <laughs> they were like... Um, they're, they're asexual, but they were, they're pan, pan romantic, which is fine. Um, and they said, can you be pan romantic minus one? <laughs> and, and we were like, what you mean? And they were like, well, I feel like I'm pan romantic, but I'm not, um, I'm not romantically attracted to men at all. And I was like, then you're not you're not pan romantic. What you mean? Like pan, like pan means all. And you know, like, and you can even say you're bi romantic and it kind of sometimes means the same thing. And sometimes it don't, it just is up to the person how they feel. Um, but they were like, but I'm like, if you're excluding someone, like if you, if I was to say that I am bisexual, but only attracted to women and AFAB, um, non-binary people or AFAB trans people, then I wouldn't necessarily call you bisexual or I wouldn't necessarily call you pansexual because it seems like you're super attracted to people who have a very specific like bi biological makeup. You know what I mean? Like, um, because you could be a, you're a trans man and you're a man, but if this person is saying I'm attracted to AFAB people. So yeah, you're a trans man, but I'm attracted to you because you were assigned female at birth. That feels a little weird or you're non-binary, but I'm attracted to you because you were assigned female at birth. That feels a little weird. And so like, it was like, come on now, you, you being a little, maybe, maybe pan romantic ain't the word for you. Maybe like gynophile or something. I think I'm saying that right. I read it somewhere. Where it was like specifically for people who are biologically female. And I'm like, okay, maybe that's a better word for you because it seems that you're only attracted to people who were assigned female at birth. So that doesn't really fit in with panromantic or biromantic. But again, I'm not really in a lot of pan communities. Maybe they got some discourse going on that I don't know nothing about. And that's up to you and them. They ain't got nothing to do with me, you know? Um, cause at the end of the day, you here cause you're asexual, your romantic orientation is up to you. But, um, yeah, I just want to talk about that because that that just made me really frustrated. And I was trying to like talk to the admin of these groups because um, she admins a lot of different groups. And to like really be like, can we get some like official statement on this? Um, because but she didn't respond to me. So it's like I don't want to be like constantly fighting in the comment section with people and like making these long walls of text about this and that and this, because at the end of the day, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a psychologist, you know what I mean? I'm just a person. And I was attracted to this group because at the baseline, we are not sexually attracted to people. And if you happen to be, you know, demisexual or, or gray sexual, um, and, and sometimes you feel it and sometimes you don't, that's fine. I even had some asexual people say things like, I'm asexual and I experienced sexual attraction, which threw me off at first because they didn't say that they were like demisexual or grace. They didn't, they didn't quantify it. You know, they were just like, I'm asexual and I experienced sexual attraction. And I was just like, ain't that the opposite of what we say here? Like, I don't understand what's going on. And that's when I say that you can get to a point and I've seen this happen with progressive groups too. Um, where you can get to a point where you're so accepting of everything that it just becomes a free for all. And then you open it up for people who are outside the community to come in and say stuff that's like wild. And then as soon as they say, but this is my lived experience though, don't invalidate me. Even if they're just fucking with you, like they're from the alt-right or something and they're there to say something crazy and fuck with you. Now, all of a sudden, you got to act like, oh, I don't want to be a dick. I don't want to be the person who invalidates people. So let's just let them say whatever they want to say. And before you know it, we'll, have, we'll be having people saying they asexual for all other different reasons. And then you'll have people saying it in broader discourse, in YouTube videos, 
on the news and news articles. And then it'll become a, um, and then it'll become, oh, if you're sexually assaulted, you're going to become asexual and that's bad. Or, oh, you say you're asexual. Maybe you just have a low libido. Maybe you just have a hormone imbalance. Maybe you just have this, this, that. And we won't even be able to refute these things anymore because you're going to have people in the community who are like, but that is true. I am only asexual because my hormones are messed up. I am only asexual because I'm on birth control. But as soon as I go off birth control, I want to have sex again. I am only asexual because I just don't feel like having sex right now. My mom actually said that to me when I came out as ace. She was like, well, I guess I'm asexual too because I don't feel like having sex right now. I'm like, that ain't what that means. That's not what they mean. That means, you know, it just, it'll, you will completely destroy the discourse and make it a free for all for everybody to the point where we'll get to the point where nobody wants to respect us anymore because we can't agree on what the fuck we even talking about in the first place. And I've seen that happen with a lot of different progressive groups where nobody gives a shit what you say anymore because y'all just say everything because you're trying to be all encompassing of everything and you don't even have a clear message anymore. So now people just brush you off to the side. And I don't want that to happen to us. So can we please just say your personal experience is good, but this is what asexuality means. You want to have the label that's fine. Do not make com do not make definitive comments saying that this and this causes asexuality. Nothing should be causing asexuality because implying that there is a cause means that there is a solution or that it can be fixed or undid. And that is not some that is not a road we want to go down. Because we know how that worked when they said that about homosexuality. We don't want to go down that road. So please, y'all, let's just keep it simple. It's already not simple, honestly. But let's keep it simple and just say, like, this is what this term is. This is what it means. There's a broad range of identities and micro labels and experiences under that. And that's okay. But this is what it means at its core so that we can form a united front so that we don't have to worry about our entire community being invalidated because of a few people who choose to have the label, whether it is, you know, specifically meant for them or not. Like we, we just got to do better about that. But yeah, I was real frustrated about all of that. And I wanted to talk about it because I was super mad and I wanted to leave these groups. Like I know people who have gotten to the point where they have left these asexual groups because of shit like this, where they just felt like it was just getting crazy and just, everything was going all over the place and they didn't even feel comfortable in their own community no more. I mean, not a lot of people watch my videos anyway, but I just wanted to get that out there so that we can, we can have this out here. And I just wanted to be heard um, because nobody fucking listens to you. Once someone says, this is my lived experience. Don't invalidate me. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Um, you know, let me know how you're doing. Let me know how that feels for you. Have you ever experienced stuff like this within the asexual community or within other progressive or marginalized communities? I want to hear everything that you got to say and what you feel about all of it. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye.